Independent Living Center, Independence Express, Oahio, Mental Health Peer Connection, Client Assistance Program, Taking Control, Independent Living of Niagara County, Independent Living of the Genesee Region, Accounting, Strategic Initiatives, Community Development, Human Resources, Intra-Agency Operations, Public Policy, Western New York Independent Living Incorporated. Welcome to the Western New York Independent Living Family of Agencies 31st Annual Year in Review. A year ago, we marked a milestone. On June 8, 2010, WNYIL began its fourth decade of service, celebrating the past 30 years with food, cake, awards, live music, and dancing. Some high points? For her hard work and dedication, Brenda Starks won Employee of the Year. Joel Singer was recognized as our Volunteer of the Year. Leslie Saunders, representing the Lions Club of Buffalo Host Club, receives the Golden Achievement Award for Corporate Support. And Joseph Lane of the University of Buffalo's Center for Knowledge Translation for Technology Transfer was accorded the Golden Achievement Award for Elaine G. Wells Community Support. Independent Living of Niagara County raised their community profile with the literature booth at the 35th annual Lockport Arts and Craft Festival. This is one of the Lock City's largest public events. On the anniversary of the signing of the Americans with Disabilities Act, over 100 of WNYIL's participants, volunteers, and staff came to Sheridan Park in Tonawanda for our annual ADA picnic. We celebrated this far-reaching landmark statute with food, music, and fun activities. Niagara Falls Mayor Paul Deister helped Independent Living of Niagara County kick off their first Americans with Disability Act celebration with a proclamation of ADA Day in the Cataract City. Afterwards, ILNC consumer staff and city officials enjoy pizza and wings. Independent Living of Niagara County's fifth annual Smallmouth Bass Fishing Derby not only proved that a 12-year-old can walk away with all the prize money, but we also recognize the generous contributions of our fishing captains who have been with us over the last five years. Friends, both new and old, came out of the woodwork to help make this event a success. Good news! You can save your place for fishing, food, and fun today by grabbing tickets for our sixth annual Fishing Derby on August 7th. In August 2010, the Western New York Independent Living Inc. family of agencies expanded eastward, opening Independent Living of Genesee Region to offer our four core services through our staff of two independent living specialists, one disability rights advocate, Director Jim Moody and his assistant. On October 2, 2010, Native American Independent Living Services celebrated their new name, Oahio, meaning the good path in the Seneca language, with a round dance competition and social at Buffalo State College. The display of skills by both young and experienced dancers pleased the crowd of 600 friends that joined the festivities. Also, many Native crafts were displayed and traded, and Miss Indian World even joined in the fun. Also during the month of October, the Council of Independent Living of Niagara County selected a new director, Sarah K. Lonzo. Sarah brings innovation ideas to the northern portion of our family of agencies. A longtime supporter and friend to WNYIL, Tom Lorenz performed with his group of very talented friends in our second annual Cruising for Independence Night fundraiser. I've been trying. Thanks to them, the hard work of the 2010 Cruising Committee and the many friends our agency has, the event was a huge success, raising $19,000 to help purchase a new wheelchair-accessible van to augment our fleet of vehicles that transport individuals with disabilities around the community. When Van 23 was ready for the road in December, it was the first to wear our Transportation Department's new Independence Express name. Staff supported our community partners and agencies in celebrating the diverse abilities of citizens with disabilities during the annual October Disabilities History Week at the Erie County Public Library in October. Continuing on our tradition of enabling our political leaders to hear the concerns of citizens with disabilities, Western New York Independent Living hosted our annual Meet the Candidates Day 
where those on the November ballot came to meet and speak with the disabled community. Our sister to the north, Independent Living of Niagara County, also held their third annual Meet the Candidates Day, entertaining political hopefuls as well. On March 15th of this year, WNYIL held a Medicaid rally for persons with disability in downtown Buffalo. Perhaps 270 advocates marched to the governor's regional office in the Mahoney State Office Building to remind our community of the importance of community-based medical services and our commitment to free persons with disabilities from nursing homes and hospital placements. Sponsor refusal would be a detriment to me and my wife. Yeah. You would have to pay for most of the things I need, which we understood when we got married. But I'm asking them not to put me in the nursing home and to keep me married. In order to raise funds for the upcoming Owahio Falls Social, Sheldon Sundown took the Native American Round Dance on the road to Niagara Falls and gave participants a preview of what's to come including a Native American craft fair, Native food, and a spirited hand drum competition. State Assemblywoman Crystal People Stokes presented her message of the attributes and needs of the Buffalo area to our staff, consumers, and community members at Mental Health Peer Connection's third annual luncheon with the policymakers at the Buffalo Niagara Convention Center. The event was a fundraiser for MHPC's housing fund for people with psychiatric disabilities. Not to be outdone, Independent Living of the Genesee region held their first annual luncheon at the YWCA of Genesee County, featuring Laurie O'Connell Bishop, Director of Special Education of the Leroy Central Schools, who presented information on special education within the school system. Immediately escalating their reputation for grabbing the show, Independent Living of Genesee region held their special Meet the Candidates Day for those individuals running for U.S. Congress in the 26th District where the candidates were only outshined by the amount of national media attention the event was given. In attendance were CNN, NPR, ABC, CBS, and the local newspaper, The Batavian. Increasing staff had been swelling the WNYIL office in Buffalo's University District to bursting for some time, and over the past year we found a solution. Immediately north of 3108 Main Street was an empty restaurant the Havana House, with a conjoined bar, the Sangria Lounge, which was picked to be the new home of the accounting department and the Taking Control Consumer-Directed Personal Assistance Program. First, some old walls, the tiny bathrooms with silver paper, the bar, the commercial kitchen with many large appliances and racks, the walk-in freezer, and other restaurant equipment and decorations had to be gutted. To meet our rigorous standards for a fully accessible facility, we had to step it up with new drywall and paint, new flooring in places, integrated workstations, two large unisex restrooms, larger doors, and short ramps with railings. To see it today with the furniture, many files, the wall art, coffee station, potted plants, and braille signage, you would think the dozens of staff of CDPAP and the accounting department has been there for years rather than just a couple of months. This has always been the approach of us at Western New York Independent Living Inc. Faced with a need to better serve our constituents with disabilities, we determine a course, secure the resources to follow it through, and implement it while following the IL philosophy that the consumer's wishes come first. But that's just the kind of family of agencies we are. Your kind. See you in the 32nd year. <laughs>